Листопад місяць від значення Голодомору в Україні 32-х і 33-х років. Цьогорічна доповідь науково-освітнього центру вивчення Голодомору на тему геноцидів Москви від Сталіна до Путіна викликала від учасників цікаве питання про відповідальність російського народу за геноцидні злочини їхньої держави проти українського народу. Це 90 років від Голодомору. And with an anniversary of this magnitude, you can imagine that we began thinking quite some time ago about how to commemorate the victims of the Holodomor in this year. Because with each passing year, it's less about grief and more about marking the resilience of a community that recognizes the dignity of the individuals who perished. But Russia's war on Ukraine has changed everything. Ukrainians again are plunged into grief. Declarations like never again, never again ring hollow. On the one hand, commemorations of the whole of the more pale in importance compared to efforts in defense of Ukraine. At the same time, the war is not contained to the battlefield. There is also a fight for truth and for history. And so perhaps it is more important than ever that we remember and reflect on the whole of the more, that we insist that it be studied and remembered. Професор Крістіна Гок, спеціалістом в справах людських прав та геноцидів, чітко розклала цьогорічну тему – геноциди Москви від Сталіна до Путіна. Професор Гок почала доповідь, згадуючи про сумні висновки трагедії Голодомору. Підкреслила брак признання сучасної української держави з боку президента Росії – та зазначила історично признаний висновок адвоката Рафаїла Лемкіна, що Голодомор – це був геноцид проти українського народу. Професор розглянула логіку злочинників, їхні наміри та представила статистику, що в час Голодомору вмирало 80 тисяч осіб в періоді трьох днів. Слухачі доповіді викликали питання про групову та індивідуальну відповідальність російського народу за кіноцидні злочини їхньої держави проти українського народу. In the context of discussions of whether this is a Putin's war or it is Russia's war, would you not consider when you include bystanders and enabler, enablers into the categories of participants of genocide, would you not consider the majority of the Russian nation as part of this process. Mm -hmm. War is not a sole endeavor. And as the, the escalation continued and we began to see this kind of pattern of atrocities that I talk about in my work, as I talked about, you know, with this process of genocide, um, also with war crimes and crimes against humanity, these are, these are, um, These are crimes that take a lot of participation. So they take, you know, finding where um, the people are gathering to send a missile. They take all of these kind of illegal activities, passportization, all of that. It takes a lot of people to get this done. And I think that that is a real indictment about the, the number of people in Russian society who are participating in ways big and small. And then over time, like the participation in violence against Ukrainians transformed into an ethical good. So we have to do this for our children and grandchildren. It's a very warped justification of an ethical good, but that's a change from it being a passive, unfortunate thing. Um, and so we do see these kind of transformations happening in Russian society. And that is um, partially for me when we talk about a state responsibility framework, the legal grounding for that. Also as a social scientist, um, what I also am saying to, to Russian society that there are rights and responsibilities of citizenship and there need to be responsibilities in facing what, what Russia as a nation has done to Ukraine. What do you feel can be some of the practical ways that Russians can participate, review? Those are, you know, if I can say it as a non-Slav, brother Slavs, they were part of a union of Soviet social republics. Is there something in Russian society that they can participate in their own inner reflection you talk about? Mm -hmm. That are there practical ways to deal with those are Russians coming back dead and injured. I have a point connected to this question. When I'm 
when I'm thinking about the future of reconciliation, I think that it will need it will need to be important for Ukrainian society to kind of reckon with when when people are ready the fact that their neighbor was not just trying to change their government, but was actually trying to destroy their way of being. But that's also going to be very important for Russian society to face the reality um, that again this wasn't a territorial skirmish, but that this was um, a very violent attempt at destruction of their neighbor.